Life is dicking you harder than a sexual deviant in a nunnery, you've got as many unpaid bills as you do snooze alarms, and your boss is screaming at you like you swapped out her tampon with a Vicks nasal spray. You need an escape, something to unplug you from the bell sander to the balls that is your daily life. You turn to video games. They'll help you escape, relax and cheer you up from being shat on by the eternal butthole in the sky. So that being said, you can't really hate on anything about video games, right? Well... <laughs> I'm a casual gamer, meaning I only really play games now and again. I used to play them all the time, but I'm older now, so I typically have other shit I should be doing. That and my boss insists that if I don't turn up to work, I won't get paid. It's fucking blackmail. But anyway, because I don't spend as much time gaming as a normal gamer, means that when I do decide to go online for some competitive multiplayer, I get the living shit bet out of me. I mean, I properly get my arse handed to me online. Because every cunt I go up against online has put as much time into the game as the fucking developer. So if you're like me, you'll pretty much spend each match getting increasingly angry because Super Assassin 037 keeps killing you over and over until you make it your personal mission to kill him back, inevitably fail, and rage quit and attempt to comfort yourself by telling yourself he's just some overweight cunt still living with his mother and the last time he was inside a woman he got a receipt. Needless to say, I have as much hope winning in online games these days as Ricky Berwick has winning in a 100 meter hurdle. Games these days are not too dissimilar to fucking a really hot, really stupid girl. In the sense that yeah, they certainly look the part and are fun for a couple of hours, but once the novelty of their looks wears off and you see them for what they really are, you realise you're balls deep in just another boring cunt. It could be me just getting older, but it does seem over the years that games, not too unlike a Catholic priest, have become less about the storytelling and more about how many explosions can be shoved down your throat. I'm convinced game developers today reverse engineer their games, starting with a stupidly flashy trailer and making a half hour sparkly game from that. Old games versus new games is the difference between even a blowjob off a fat ugly girl or a skinny pretty one. One's not easy on the eye but damn it that just motivates her to try harder and the other will lip your shaft for five minutes before angrily storming off because you didn't tell her her hair looked pretty. <laughs> So let's say the stars align and you have a few free days to do whatever you want, and you decide you're going to play a game that you've been meaning to play for a while. So you spend two or three days completely absorbed by this game, playing it from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, only taking breaks for eating, sleeping and the occasional wank. But the problem comes when those few days are over, and you look back to reflect on what you've accomplished and your increasingly hard to come by free time. You think to yourself that time spent gaming over them last few days could have been better applied in your life, so at the very least you could have something to show for it. Coincidentally that was one of the major reasons I decided to make these videos in the first place. So if that suddenly decided to slip his icy cold finger on my butthole, I'd have something better to show for my existence than just a fucking gamer score. The more I expand on this, the more I feel like this is something that only bothers me. But surely I'm not alone on this, right? Remember the good old days where you could just pop a game into your console and play it once it got past all those logo screens? This was pretty painless, especially if those logos were skippable. Did you hear that game developers? Now according to a loose interpretation of Moore's law, as time goes by technology will become faster and cheaper every two years. Now that's been spot on on pretty much every area of computing, except gaming, where games are only getting more expensive and to prod the point of this little tangent, they're getting fucking slower. If you pop a game into your console for the first time these days, you'll be greeted with a fucking install screen. That'll keep you company for the next few hours. Once you suffer through that and you think you're good to go. Update required. <sighs> Now you gotta wait another fuck knows how long because game companies don't believe in testing their games anymore before releasing them. Now finally, it's installed, all the updates are downloaded and the game finally starts up. Ah for fuck's sake. Kick, punch it's all in the mind if you wanna test me. I fucking hate DLC. Well not all of it, to be fair there is some gems among them. But the concept of it as a whole winds me up more than a corkscrew butt plug. Games with DLC is like striking a deal with an overpriced prostitute who insists on giving you a blowjob in installments and not letting you finish until you pay her again. This is a market employee to make you think you're getting extra content, though in reality most of the time the content you're given is content that was blatantly cut from the game before release, making the game without it feel like it's missing something. That or the content has absolutely no bearing or impact on the game as a whole, feeling more like a bit that was just tacked on, similar to a what if scenario rather than a true expansion of what was already there. On the whole, DLC is like pleasuring an angry dwarf with an umbrella and a bag of cheese. Sure, it's fun to 